Good morning. Good morning. A more welcome to everyone in our Savior's name. God gathers us to receive renewal on this All Saints Sunday through the gifts of the Word and the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And all of God's children are invited to share in this holy meal. We also remember those who have died during the past year, including those whose funerals and memorial services have been held through our Saviors. And a special welcome to those relatives and friends who have come for this time. And thank you to all who have helped get ready for the service, including Vi for stepping in quickly for Darlene while she heals from a fall. We welcome those watching this service on our YouTube channel. On Saturdays, we continue to email the worship and sermon files and post them on our website. Today for All Saints Sunday, we're also once again using our memorial candle stand, but we are lighting them all by two of us because sanitizing with alcohol a flame isn't the wisest thing to do. Next Sunday, November 14th, is Service of the Word, and also Remembered Sunday here at Our Saviors. During our worship, we'll have a moment of silence remembering all those involved in war. And thank you to J. But Brian Peden, whose Remembrance Day Poppy Cross will once again be at the front of the sanctuary. The next Senate Youth Worship Service is being held this afternoon at 5 p.m. at Faith Lutheran Church in Winnipeg. And we're able to take part in it by live stream as a recording through the Senate Youth YouTube channel. And the link is in the bulletin and online. In October, we received donations for the Gathering Tables food bank, so many that they're almost overflowing the wicker basket. So thank you so much. During November, gifts received in the basket in the front hall will go to the Current River Church's food cup. Each Sunday, we need a greeter, usher, reader, and sanitizer, and our new list for November is in the front hall on the table. So the volunteer, please sign up on the sheet. Council, member, council members, your package for this Tuesday meeting is in your mailbox under the balcony. And for everyone, we finally resume the use of the mailboxes, as well as the prayer request book in the front hall. And the chairs under the balcony have been increased as well. We are still worshipping socially distanced without vaccination certificates being checked at the door. That new option under the government stage three of its reopening plan will be discussed by council on Tuesday. Coming soon is our Savers Christmas takeout tea on Saturday, December 4th, 2021. And ordering details will be published after Remembrance Day, but you can read many of them in the front hall already. And meanwhile, your energetic planning team requires your help for setup, cleanup, and to make sandwiches at the church, and more importantly, to, or most importantly, to provide dainties. And please contact Kim Koivakowski if you want to be part of this traditional tea in a new special way. We are taking subscriptions for next year for our National Church's Candle Lutheran magazine. And information about that is in the bulletin this morning. Uh, please have your subscriptions in by next Sunday so that you can receive all the, all the issues next year. We also invite you to participate in our National Church's annual praise appeal. And there's more information on that in the bulletin as well. Our next virtual fellowship session is next Sunday at 1 p.m. and the Zoom info will be in next Saturday's e-news. Parts of our service today are given to us for all saints and being used across North America in our Lutheran churches. We begin with the remembrance of all saints on page 2. Let us remember all the saints before God. We praise and bless you, O Holy Trinity. You have taught your church that it is an ageless communion of saints. We thank you for gathering those who faithfully waited in hope for the redemption you promised. And now for adding us who celebrate the love of Christ for the redemption of the world. 
Prepare a place for us among those who are already with you. Help us remember them as an encouragement to saintly living, exciting us to love, in anticipation of an eternal reunion. With them we praise and bless you, O Holy Trinity. Amen. Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you will find rest for my soul. We are still listening to our songs or singing them very softly, our opening song for all the saints, number 422 in the Red Book. together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We listen to the Word of God. First reading is from Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. Isaiah sees a vision at the end of days, when God will gather all people on God's holy mountain and will prepare them for a rich feast. At this banquet, God will wipe the tears from all eyes. God will destroy death itself. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines streamed clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, No, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. 
Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Next hymn is, Shall We Gather at the River? chapter 21, verses 1 to 6a. Here is a vision of the new heaven and new earth in which God resides fully with God's people so that mourning, despair, and pain have been eradicated. These renewing words from the, from the God who spans all of time are trustworthy and true. A reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We prepare to hear the words of the good news with the gospel acclamation of the Bible, page four. Hallelujah. They are before the throne of God, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Through the raising of Lazarus, Jesus offers the world a vision of the life to come, when death and weeping will be no more. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? 
They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? <clears throat> then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. A year ago we gathered for all saints, remembering those who had died, mourning the losses caused by the pandemic, and sensing hope not only in the promises of God, but also in the news about vaccine developments. Little did we foresee that a year later, once more we would be gathering in the shadow of the pandemic, with case counts fluctuating, with the young children of our country now being the most vulnerable to catching the virus, and with some of those whom we remember here today having died because of COVID or its complications. We could have little imagined five million deaths around the world to date. It's been a hard year on our mental and physical health, our routines, our livelihoods, our relationships, and our faith. Many tears have been shed for persons known and unknown, and for ourselves. This morning we gather with one another to remember and to mourn. The good news is that we also gather in the presence of the one who sees us, hears us, and promises to wipe away our tears, if not now, then one day. In the midst of tears and memories, the Spirit offers comfort, healing, strength, and hope. We receive the good news of the one who loves us, offers us grace, and invites us to walk in the light amidst the shadows. Because of this, we do not simply mourn our dearly departed on this day. We also give thanks for their lives and witness. And most importantly, we proclaim faith in the one who continues to hold us, together with them, in the great communion of saints that stretches across time and space. Theologian Catherine Schifferdecker has recently pointed out that the Isaiah text this morning speaks of death as the shroud that is cast over all peoples the sheet that is spread over all nations. Death is the great equalizer. There is no nation, no people immune from its reach. In ancient Canaanite myths, death boasts that its appetite is like that of lions in the wilderness, insatiable, that he will devour everything in his path. That image is one that may underlie this vision of Isaiah. The enemy here is not Assyria, nor Egypt, nor any other foreign power. The enemy is death itself. 
into whose gaping mouth all living things will eventually disappear, swallowed up forever. Schiffer Decker observes that in order to hear the promises of today's text clearly, we must first acknowledge the losses we have experienced. Though we do not personally acknowledge death as the ancients did, its power over us is as strong as its power over them. Death has indeed swallowed up, she says, many, many lives in our world today, and has indeed cast a shroud over all peoples. But the good news in Isaiah is that God becomes the death of death. We hear, and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. This looks ahead to God's deliverance of the Israelites from tyrants, oppression that has caused much suffering and death, the destruction of the holy city Jerusalem, and the loss of the country. There's even something more. In imaginative language, we hear that God is about to prepare a banquet, not only for the leaders, not only for the chosen people, but for all peoples and all nations. Indeed, the word all occurs five times in three verses. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. In the chapter previous to this, the wine had all dried up, along with mirth and joy. But here, food, drink, and delight return on God's terms, in a spirit of celebration and harmony. Mourning clothes are no longer needed, since the people are comforted. Victorious over that most persistent foe, God wipes away tears from all faces. In front of this this victory is not subject to repetition, but is sustained forever. The prophet offers no divine plan for achieving this vision. We cannot take out our calendars and write it in, or check our mailboxes and inboxes for the invitation. We still live with death. And many of us live with the dread of death. We still live with physical, emotional, social, and spiritual wounds. We still live with divisions between nations, and with divisions between people within nations and within communities. Still, I believe this vision calls on readers, ancient and modern, to embrace these dreams and to seek their fulfillment. In the midst of our tears, in the midst of these days, God calls to us, inviting us to look forward to that day when God will make things right will bring people together, and most significantly for this Sunday, will destroy death forever. Our other readings also encourage us to look forward to that day. Revelation contains words reflecting the hope of Isaiah. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And John offers the reason for this continuing hope. Something has changed. Jesus has come, has lived, and has been raised. The story of Jesus raising Lazarus 
demonstrates the life-giving power of Jesus. So also we can experience that life-giving power here and now, even though we still wait. We live with death. But because of Jesus, we live with life. And that gives us even greater hope. We wait for Jesus' return. But we wait knowing not only that the Lord will come, but that he has come. There was hope in the present time that Isaiah originally addresses. There is even greater hope in our present because we live on this side of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. All creation sings. The new supplement to our Red Hymn Book includes a song by Ray Makey ever entitled, Death Be Never Last. In a video, Make Ever recounts how he wrote it in 1992. Its first stanza and melody came to him a couple of weeks after the death of his spouse, Judy, while he was sleeping. When he awoke, he simply wrote them down. They felt to him as gifts of peace and assurance from God and from Judy. The second and third stanzas came later as he worked through grief and experienced hope. And to me, its words and music bring together wonderfully the images and messages of our readings. We walk in light of countless faces, bright as beams as of rising sun, certain as the morning chases night in endless ages run, turning eyes now to their shining memory, to their faithful past, Saints be now the truth divining, death be now, but never last. When sorrow's heavenly hand has weighted loss against the greater gain, pinning down that grief sore faded, laden on the bed of pain, turning eyes now to their shining memory, to their faithful past, Saints be now the truth divining, death be now, but never last. When joy returns with laughter singing, thanks to God for life's sweet song, let us follow after, bring thanks to God for those now gone, turning eyes now to their shining memory, to their faithful past, Saints be now the truth divining, death be now, but never last. God sees our tears, shares our grief, and remembers with us. God also promises, see, I am making all things new. It will be so that one day we gather around this heavenly banquet with all God's children. You and I and all the saints will share in the joy and laughter that follows, and our tears will disappear. The good news is that even now, even today, we gather around another banquet and hear the words that we are loved. Thanks be to God for the saints. Thanks be to God, now and forever. Amen. Let's listen to the hymn of the day, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, number 502. <clears throat>
Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Merciful God, we give thanks for all your saints, who through the ages have shared your message of hope and of white tears away. Continue to raise up witnesses to your good news within and among us. Hear us, O God, the mercy is great. Creating God, we praise you for abundant harvest and the goodness of creation. Celebrate communities of care for your earth, so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. As we remember those who fought and those who died in war, strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans and civilians who carry the scars of war. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, we give you thanks for health care workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who long for healing in any way. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, we thank you for the promise to hear us when we pray. Be with those we remember before you, including Alan, Michael, Ray, and Eleanor, Elizabeth, Karen, Glenn, and Keith, Matthew, June, Carol, and Paula, Ron, Cindy, Judy, and Tammy, Carrie Lynn, Harvey, Art, and Lillian, Dory, Chris, Brian, and Arden. Grace, Eleanor, Audrey, and Daniel. Michael, Karen, Janice, and Elf. Donna, Renee, Lawrence, and Rob. Levi, Liam, Lisa, and Nick. Kathleen, Donna May, Nicole, and Joan. Tina, Elaine, Catherine, and Susan. Ron, Linda, Shelley, and Raylan. Nell, Tanner, Jeff, Barry, and Diane. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of tears, we thank you for listening to our prayers even when we cannot find the words to say. Be with us now as we lift our silent concerns to you. Hear us, O God. God of justice, we praise you for the feeding ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship, including the dew drop in. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, volunteers, and meal ministry coordinators. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. God of the ages. We give you thanks for those who have died during this past year, who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us, including Rob Winters, Jerry LaForme, Alice Leaf, Bill Wilkie, Stella Gilbert, Alan Albrecht, Beth Colson, Susan Furla, Leslie Nagy, Doris McFarland, John Alsh, Donald Belair, June Steinhoff, Tiffany Ayres, and those we name in our hearts. Wipe away our tears and lead us until we feast together on your holy mountain. Hear us, O oh God. God, our protection and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace, share the sign of peace with one another. gifts received and shared, let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, that you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts, and strengthen us to be your body for the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Receive God's blessing. God the beginning and the end who has written your name in the book of life. Bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. 
Another one of the songs in our new blue book is oh, When the Saints Go Marching In, our ascending song.